What we are with us in the studio is um, a man who has risen from grass. Uh, he hasn't got into grace quite yet, but his story has been a phenomenal one. He used to be an auto mechanic just a few years ago, but right now he's not only the reigning MBB of C, that's the Nigeria Boxing Board of Control light heavyweight champion. Over the weekend, he captured the West African Boxing Union light heavyweight title as well. He has a fearsome record of 15 fights, 15 wins. 14 of them coming by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with nothing but absolute pleasure that I would like to welcome to Game On tonight the reigning MBBOC light uh, heavyweight champion of uh, Nigeria and the reigning, the brand new West African Boxing Union light heavyweight champion as well, Lekon the Engine Muibi. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Game On. What a performance over the weekend. I was there live ringside. I saw every particular punch as it was thrown. You had a very dangerous opponent in uh, uh, she Olara Shegun, success Olara Raju. But before we get to that, before we get to that, um, let's start from the very beginning. How did you get into boxing? That's always very, that's always the, the main question because, I mean, from the story that I know of as an auto mechanic, how does an auto mechanic, you know, changing um, pistons and, and uh, crankshafts and basically changing oil, you move from that to boxing? Uh, well, it all started when I went to visit my mother in Ogun State mm. uh, because my parents have departed some years back. Okay. So I always go and visit my mother every weekend. I would spend like two days there. So when I get there that day, uh, I met my brother there. I wasn't even know that he's a boxer. So he said he's going to train. I said, you are going to train. Can I, can I go with you? He said, no problem. I should go. I should come along. So when we get there, he did some few exercises. Then after then, he put on the glove and started sparring. So I was moved when he was, he was doing the sparring. I was very, very moved. So after he finished sparring, I asked him, can I, can I give it a try? He said, no problem, I should, I should try. So he put on the glove. He, he helped me with the glove. Then I, I fought the guy he just finished. You sparred with the guy? I, mm -hmm. I sparred with the guy he just finished sparring with. And in the next uh, one minute, I knocked him out. So people wow. were because people your were very wow. first wow. time putting on a pair of gloves. Honestly, I knocked him out in one minute. Wait, you knocked him down or you knocked him out? I knocked him out. Ah, people wow. were like clapping so because people were playing ball. So they were clapping. I was like, wow, is this how this goes? So I said, when I get to Lagos, I will go and um, join a team, a boxing team. But fortunately, I couldn't find. So there is a one primary school that we used to play ball every weekend as well. Mm. So that day, it was my, uh, uh, let me say, uh, uh, my favorite day. So some boxers came to that field to come and train. So immediately I saw them, I just go and meet the coach and ask him, um, coach, I would like to join the team. He said, no problem. I, 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 will, I will get this, I will get that, I will get the form. Okay, I said, no problem. So the next day, I went to go and get the form. So we started, not, uh, not up to three weeks. Um, the coach is nowhere to be found. He's not coming to the um, boxing gym. Wow, again. coach disappeared. Honestly. So even our, um, the senior I met there that we are training together, everybody starts going one by one, one by one. So, and uh, that first day I put on the glove, I spar with the guy. I know this is what I want. I think this is what I want. Mm. So I, I started going on uh, YouTube since then. YouTube? Yeah, YouTube is... You are watching I, YouTube? Yeah, I watch... Learning YouTube. how to box on YouTube? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, watch Mark Tyson, Marvin Hagler. So I started learning from there. That is where I pick. That YouTube, let me say, YouTube is the one that helped me most in this boxing career. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So let's talk about... Um, your, your amateur career. I do know that um, you were involved in a few amateur competitions. I think there was one particular one, Gifted Co. Uh, uh, competition, where you won a car and one million naira. Tell us about that. Uh, it was uh, it was amazing that day. I, a, a friend of mine is also a boxer. He's one that introduced me to like there's a fight in social so place. I said okay, I, I would like to participate. So. We get there, it was a four days um, um, program, four days fighting. I, I, we went to group stage, after group stage, I qualified to um, quarter final. Then I met a guy, the guy is so good, but you know, I, I fought that day, I, I, knocked, I knocked him out as well. Ah. So that was how I- That's I how you won a car? Best, best boxer of the year. And one millionaire. What yeah. did you do with the one millionaire? Ah. 
the, I, let me say I I split it out like I give a lot of people money because mm. people that have been supporting me from day one mm. assisting me you know uh, 20,000 10,000 uh, 40,000 30,000 even all the boxing gym I know that I used to work with I make sure I even I myself I don't spend up to 100,000 to, my, mm. to that's myself incredible. Wow, that's incredible but I, but, but let's, let's also talk about how you got into professional boxing as well. I do recall you mentioned that you met your manager on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. That day, I, I, I just finished training that day. So my phone was not hooking then, but I was, that was the first post I would post on Anthony Joshua page. So I was okay, there's an Anthony Joshua the, yeah, fan page fan on page. Facebook. Okay. Yeah, that's where my manager found me. So it just chatted me up that. Uh, what did you post? I put um, where I was um, punching bag, okay. training with punch bag. So he said, uh, can I, um, where am I learning uh, all those stuff from? I said, uh, uh, it's on YouTube. He said, okay, I want you to go into boxing fully. So that is how it started. And it was uh, the first day I, I, I met, uh, the first day he chatted me up, that was the first day I know that, okay, I think this is the right person for me. And he has been doing a lot of work on me. And so just so we're clear, you went into boxing fully. You were originally an auto mechanic. Yeah, yeah. You were fixing cars. Yeah. And you quit that and you became a professional yeah. boxer fully. Yeah. And it's now 15 fights, 15 wins, and 14 knockouts. Wow. That's an incredible story. Guys, you have any questions for him? Yeah, man. Well, well, questions. <laughs> well, well, I would like to, I mean, first of all, salute your courage. It's not easy to leave a profession into another profession, I mean, and attacking it so well that you are yet to be defeated in the profession. Let's look at also, you know, uh, the aspect of uh, the challenges you faced. I mean, we know that in Nigeria, we have lots of talent, lots of boxers, but they always have one or two things that have not made them get to that height. For you, what has been the challenges and how have you been able to overcome them in Nigeria? Uh, all thanks to my, my manager. It was, it was the one that motivated me the most. But based on financially and all that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I stopped working. You know, I called my family, my brother and my sister, like, okay, Ah, sorry for uh, saying this language, Oti Shele, I think I will stop uh, mechanic work. I want to go into boxing fully. I said, ah, ah why, why now? Ah, boxing, boxing that there's no money. I said, ah, this is my way, this is my way. But since I started, my manager has been supporting me from day one. It was the one, I, let me say, I didn't face more challenges, more challenges while uh, my manager is around. I don't know how to put the word, but... Uh, my challenge is not that much because he is the one that's covered everything. When you say everything, what, what do you mean? Like, uh, when I said I need something like money for glove to, uh, to go to training, mm. say no problem. Omola, medication? Uh, medication, supplements, say no problem. Omola, I will send it to you and mm. you will do that. And I was, I was so really impressed. What, like what? Does he, did he buy you a car? Did he get you a house? Are you on a salary? That kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the salary. I'm on the salary. I'm on the salary. He's really doing. Uh, he's really doing well for That's me. incredible. Yeah. I'd like to well, know the name of this um, manager. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing an incredible job. But um, I mean, credit to what you've been doing. Um, Fifteen fights, fourteen by knockout is it's incredible. I remember you talked about one challenging fight. That was um, the ID Thunder. ID yeah. Buster. ID Buster. Now you remember? For those who don't remember, ID Buster was the Nigerian fighter who went to Ghana. Who was robbed by was the referees? Robbed, yeah, yeah they said he the knocked his opponent out, Samir Basti, mm -hmm. and they declared it a draw yeah, until yeah. the re decision was reversed and uh, he was given the title. And, and this was the guy you knocked out cold. You knocked him out again. Yeah, the boss. Wow. Actually, <laughs> I think you fought Adi Bossa twice, haven't you? Yeah, I fought him in amateur and I fought him as a yeah. game. And you beat him both times. Yeah. And that is your toughest fight. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. You know, the guy, the guy is incredible. He's, he's very strong. Mm. Let me give him that. But. Uh, we are not on uh, on the same level. Ish. There we strong, go. I'm stronger. <laughs> Shots fired. But, but, but I, I wanted to talk about the fact that when I read up on, about you, you talked about your role models. You, you name checked Mike Tyson, yeah. Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler. I mean, how do you go way back to 1978 to be to to see someone as your role model? Hey. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you talked about um, Floyd Mayweather, who you said is part of the way you fight, and um, we also get Anthony Joshua as well. You know. Some very interesting names, but I wanted to ask you, as a boxer with an unbeaten record, when you're going to fight, what, what goes on in your head as you step into that ring? As a boxer who has got an incredible record, you know, what is going on in your head as you approach that, that fight, any fight you, you, you're up against? The only thing that goes on in my head, I'm sorry to use this word, 
and still destroy my hope on it. Mm. <laughs> to mm. annihilate your mm. So, you know, my, 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 uh, my honey is just to win. I hate lose. I hate losses. Always, I want to win. Mm. So that's it. That's really it. But let's talk about um, your last fight. Uh, took place on Sunday at the Indoor Sports Hall of the National Institute of Sports. There you faced um, the reigning, uh, the, the, well, back then, the reigning West African Boxing Union Light Heavyweight Champion, uh, Shegu and Larry Waju. Uh, there a lot of talk was going on before this fight. And that's you after the fight, being lifted up by you know, your fans, uh, you know, joyous fans. But it was a tough, a tough fight. Uh, both of you gave as close as, as, as much as you could. Um, in fact, there are a lot of people who are disputing the, the results. Olari Raju himself was disputing the results. He felt he won. What is your impression? I mean, you promised to knock him out the, in the eighth round. You didn't. It was the first time in your career that you actually gone the distance. So can, can you tell us why didn't you get that knockout? I mean, you've been on a winning streak, a long streak of 14 straight knockouts. What happened this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, some, there are secrets behind it. Mm. That even I didn't tell my manager. I didn't tell my coach. Because I know my manager, anytime I say I have injury, he loves me so much. Like, he wants to, he wants to, he's right, you withdraw the fight. Like, okay, maybe you fight next coming months. Just relax, treat yourself. But I don't want that because my high is, is on the title. Mm. That is the first step I've been waiting for since I started my, my boxing career. You know, I have injury in my, ha in my hand. You mean right now? Yeah, so you fought with an injury? Yeah, yes, in my boot hand. If I, my coach does not know, but I just want to, you know, because I, I want to, I want this um, title badly. Mm. Interestingly, if I recall, that was not the original title you were supposed to fight for. You were supposed to fight for the ABU, that's the African Boxing, Boxing Union title, yeah. but you had to set for the West African Boxing Union. You want to tell us what happened? Uh, actually, I don't really know the full details, but I think uh, the ABU uh, president, uh, um, disapprove our uh, same success mm. based on uh, losses, our uh, last fights in Russia. Okay, so they didn't approve your opponent yeah. to fight for the ABU, yeah. So, but for the Wabu was, was available yeah. and you went for that. Okay, so now, uh, very quickly, I'll have to wrap this up. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful record right now, 15 fights, uh, 15 wins, 14 knockouts. What, what's next for you? I mean, you, you should be eyeing the international stage. Yeah. I mean, you... I, I want you, stage you, 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 I, yeah, I mean, I mean, Wale, of course, you've done yeah. everything you can do in Nigeria. It has to be just like international stage. Bag, you know, trying exactly. to look forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, the next thing for me is to uh, conquer the international, fight for the world title, WBC, IBO, IBF. Mm. I'm coming for all that. I'm yeah, coming, coming for all Slow that. your roll up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know that, that some of I mean, the current WBC, WBA uh, champions, uh, the IBF and um, um, WBA champions, Dimitri Bivol, Badman extraordinaire, mm -hmm. uh, and also Arthur Betebiev, the juggernaut himself. Both of them will be facing off for the right to be crowned the undisputed life. That's the two of them yep. on the screen. Both of them fearsome records. These are the men you say you want to take their title. Yes, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Okay. I'm good to go. Yeah. But what's your philosophy as a fighter? Yeah. Like, uh, sorry, I don't get it. So, yeah. like, Break it down. are you the guy who is more on the defensive side, or are you the, are you the guy? Because you mentioned Floyd Mayweather. I mean, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to watch he, his fights. This man always goes forward. <laughs> he <laughs> always like goes like forward. The, uh, God, 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 mm. God, God gave me a gift. God gave me, let me say, God gave me many talents. I can defend. I can attack. I have, you know, I have the power. Let me just say, I have the multiple talents. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everything is in me. Okay. So, yeah. so when, when can we expect to see you on the international scene anytime soon? I, I, I mean... Yeah, soon, soon. My, my management are working, are working really hard for that. And very soon, you're going to see me. Okay. So if your management comes out and says, next, you're fighting favor to us, so you're good mm -hmm. to go. I'm good to go. Less, less. It's favor good to go. The question is, is it's favor good to go? Okay. We've been speaking with uh, reigning WB and MBB of C, light heavyweight champion of Nigeria, and the brand new West African Boxing Union light heavyweight champion as well, Lekon the Engine Mwibi, who has a fearsome record of 15 fights, 15 wins, 14 of them by knockout. He's the next big thing coming out of Nigeria, and we'll be watching uh, his career very, very closely. Uh, let's move on very quickly to some other news as well involving combat sports. Nigeria-born, New, uh, New Zealand-based UFC fighter 
Bender, Israel style Bender Adesanya says he's set to return to the octagon for the first time since losing his title to Sean Strickland last <laughs> year. Uh, Adesanya, a middleweight con uh, contender now, is set to face the reigning champion D Drikos Duplessis of South Africa in USC 305. Uh, that will be on the 18th of August 2018. The style Bender will uh, face off with the Duplessis at Perth's RAC, RAC Arena with the middleweight belt on the line. The pair are sworn enemies, with Adesanya still fuming at previous comments from Duplessis, in which the South African said he wanted to become the first real African champion. Duplessis, however, has maintained that he wasn't disrespectful and simply stating the facts that as far as discrediting, uh, he never discredited anybody. Gentlemen, Wale, this, we, ha we have a fight. This I, is a good I, yeah, fight. I saw the stare down. Oh, this is a good fight. This, I mean, from the stare down. As we say in Nigeria, elite talent. Yeah, of course. <laughs> As you see, seeing the stare down today, you know that this is going to be like blood or everywhere. There's, there's this one has an edge to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's going to be really good. And I can't wait for August 18 for this one. Um, and I like the, the subplot mm. coming into this. Plessy has talked about um, the fact that he wants to be the real African champion. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Um, Israel Easy also took a jibe at him when he talked about the three African kings. Yeah. Kamaru, Nganu, mm. and, and him himself. Mm. And it didn't involve Plessis, who is also African. You know, he's South African. He, he's, that's what he's claiming. That's what Duplessis is saying. That, look, I live in South Africa. I trained in South I trained Africa. I train in South yeah. Africa. I was born and raised in South Africa. You, you yeah, you are born in Nigeria, <laughs> but you moved to New Zealand. You are, you are confused. So you that, are that really hurt really really Duplessis. Mm. Really, really hurt him. And um, Plessy has been good, I must admit. I mean, if it's Sean, Sean Strickland in very emphatic, very oh, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. In very good fashion. So I think Easy also has to be careful. He's been out of the octagon for a while. For a, for a while. year now. So um, I even thought he said he was going on a long break. So this had to be very enticing for him to come back. Uh, but it will definitely be a big fight. This is the biggest fight in the UFC between now and August. And honestly, I can't African wait. battle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's true. <laughs> African I'm not big on UFC, but this... Um, oh, yeah, I'm going yeah, to wait I'm, for I'm this one. Yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to uh, other news. The Olympics is also coming up in just a few days. For, well, from passport control to security at the airport terminals, the border police, that's the PAF actor, Rossi, Charles de Gaulle Airport, says they are ready to handle the flow of passengers expected during the Paris Olympics in particular, thanks to numerous reinforcements during the Olympic Games, which will take place from the 25th of July to the 11th of August, and the Paralympic Games, which will also take place immediately after that, from the 28th of August to the 8th of September, uh, the Parisians, well, the French government are saying that we know that there will be days that are extremely important and will have uh, uh, perhaps up to 300,000 travelers during the day at Russi. That's according to Julien Gentile, who is the director of the PAF at Paris, uh, Paris airports during a press visit. Every day, around 200,000 passengers, that's departures and arrivals and connections, pass through the uh, famous French International Airport. Let's uh, take a quick listen uh, to what uh, uh, Julien Gentile had to say. En fait, à partir du 12 juillet jusqu'au 15 septembre, on va mettre en place un dispositif qui est, euh, alors pour le coup, totalement inhabituel, c'est-à-dire que 100% des postes de travail, de contrôle à l'intérieur des aéroports Roissy et Orly vont être armés à 100%, tout le temps. C'est-à-dire un peu, si je prends une, une allusion, c'est comme si dans votre supermarché, toutes les caisses étaient ouvertes tout le temps, de l'ouverture jusqu'à la fermeture. Donc ça représente un être armé. Le but du jeu étant de faire face le mieux possible à un afflux de voyageurs supplémentaires qui est estimé comme étant un, un, un afflux très important, mais dont on, ne connaît, dont on ne connaît pas exactement le détail. Mais on sait qu'il y a des journées qui vont être extrêmement importantes et on aura peut-être 300 000 voyageurs dans la journée à Roissy ou... 130, 140 000 à, à, à Orly. Et sur ces journées-là, on souhaite éviter en fait les euh, catastrophes avec des temps d'attente trop importants qui perturbent la marche de l'aéroport et qui en plus ne euh, voilà, donnent pas forcément une bonne image. Well, you can be very sure that the French government will uh, spare no resources to ensure that uh, the Paris 2024 Olympic Games are safe. Uh, and also will go on without any form of interruption. We're all looking forward to what promises to be a fantastic global event. Well, uh, at this point in time, we'd like to take a break. We'd like to thank Lekon, the engine, maybe for his time. Uh, we'd also like to wish him the very best of luck uh, in his future endeavors, especially that upcoming fight between you and uh, Fevo Itoa will definitely be ringside for that one. Is yeah. what? Is he married? Who? Lekon. Is he? Are you married? No. Okay. No, not yet. So, okay. So I uh, will be waiting yeah. for that upcoming fight between you and yeah, Favor Itoa. We'll be ringside with the cameras. You want, you want me to go on one leave? <laughs> <laughs>